You talk about le leading from meaning and purpose and about, about living from higher consciousness. Basically what I'm trying to find out from your perspective is what is the purpose of it all anyway? I mean, if, if we're just, just of life and the purpose of what, we're, um, what, what the point of higher consciousness is, if it's just to manifest another thing and to keep going and to manifest another thing and another thing and another thing. I'm just wondering what is the point of it? Is for it to always manifest something? Isn't that kind of, is that? Well, well, I, I, <laughs> well, you would, well, that's a fair question, but you want to look at it from God's point of view. So if, so if God's the energy and intelligence that initiated the creative process, then you want to say, well, why did God create the universe? So you, well, you have to put yourself in, in, you have to put yourself in, in God's position. If we're, if we're using theological language here, so permit me to do that. So you want to put yourself in God's position, because the answer to your question is, why did God create the universe? So if you were God, you would already, you would already be perfect and complete as you were. So, right, if you were God, as God, the unmanifest or unbecome God, God before the universe was created, right? I don't know that. I, what? I don't well, just know. think about it. If you were God before the universe was created, if you, before the universe was created, there wouldn't be any time, right? Right. There wouldn't be any form. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be any space, right? But you'd still be there, right? So what is it like to exist when, when, there's, no, when there's no time and no space and no form? Very peaceful. Good. Very good. So it's very, so it'd be incredibly peaceful, right? Mm -hmm. Unbelievably. <coughs> right, because, no, because there's no time. Mm -hmm. so, so before, so because when there's time, see, before the universe was born, you didn't have any problems. You didn't have anything to overcome. You didn't have any big evolutionary projects either. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And you also didn't have any problems to overcome. Mm -hmm. No fear, no regret. Mm -hmm. so, be so before the universe was created, everything was very, was, was how it couldn't have been better. Right? Based on what we're speaking of, it couldn't yes. have been better. You had no problems. Right? No, everything was cool. Right. But the point is, if you want to put yourself, you have to just go on a little bit of a kind of theological fantasy here. If you want to put yourself in that position and imagine that you'd been abiding in this perfect state, mm -hmm. this perfectly blissful state for billions of eons of no time, billions of eons of no time, everything had been just absolutely couldn't have been better. Now, if, if you were God and you'd been doing this for billions of eons of no time, you might start wondering. <laughs> yeah. You say, this is just absolutely fantastic, but you know, I've been doing this forever. And... And maybe, I, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I should do something, yeah. right? Because right. you don't have to do anything. Because if you're God, you wouldn't have to do anything. But you might decide you wanted to do something because there'd be nothing else for you to do because you've already been doing nothing forever anyway. Mm. <laughs> right? Right. You know, it makes sense. You, you just would say, yeah, I might do that. And you might think, of, think this over for billions, for eons and eons. You might be concerned. I will, I won't, I will, I won't. No, yes, no, yes. <laughs> Until you got to a point when you said, to hell with it, I'm going to do it. And if you were God, what's the biggest thing you could possibly think of doing? Creating. Creating a universe. Mm -hmm. material. Because if you were God, you don't do anything in small measures. You only, you, only do, you only do things, you only do the biggest thing, you only think in very big terms. So if you were God, you'd say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a material universe in my own image. Mm -hmm. and, what's your, and what's your own image? Consciousness, which is not a thing, it's not an object. Okay. Oh. So, you, okay, now of course, the nature of what God is is absolutely perfect. Always one and perfect, right? So if you were God, you'd be trying to, you'd be striving then to create that absolute perfection that you already are in form. It's a perfection that you already are, because that's, mm. that's your own natural state being God. But then when you create the, the material universe, you take a deep breath, and then boom, that's when it started. Then, you're, then the, the universe project, as I define it, is that, is, the, is that original intention to create a material universe in your own form. And your own form would be that perfection. But what we find is that in manifestation, because the unmanifest expression of God is the perfect wholeness, but when God becomes manifest, when we take that leap from formlessness to form, from nothing to something, uh, then we realize that what we're calling perfection is unattainable because we're, we then, when, once you cross over the realm and enter into manifestation, you enter into a creative process where you're ever striving to reach that perfection, but you'll never, you'll, you always will just be about to, but you'll never get there. So, 
so we want to, so, the, so, the, so God as eros or as the creative principle or as the urge to become is, is right, which is what we're all about, is that, is that, is that stri is the striving towards that wholeness or perfection that you already are in your unmanifest form and you're striving to create it and become it in manifestation. So it seems that's what God's up to. And when you awaken to this, uh, what I'm calling this authentic self or evolutionary impulse, that's what you start to feel. You start to feel this ecstatic urgency. And the ex inherent in the ecstasy is the experience of fullness, wholeness, perfection, freedom. Mm -hmm. it, but it's a freedom and a wholeness and perfection that is striving, right. that wants to become. So it's a perfection. It's an, it's, you experience it as an already whole, already perfect state, feeling, right. that, that at the same time is striving is striving to become. Right. See my point? I do see your point. I, I, no, I do see your point. I get... <sighs> see, that's the answer. But it's also, also, it's always manifesting something. So it's always, in a sense, material. Because it's always ma wanting to manifest something. So what's the no, point? No, 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 but, but you, you, you see, you, you, if you only look at the exterior, then you're only going to see matter. You have to see, remember, there's an exterior and an interior. So the materialist worldview doesn't recognize interiors. It only sees exteriors. Yeah, if, you, yeah. if you realize that for every exterior there's an interior, then you're going to see the interior is always, is always going to be part of the process. And so what's driving the process is coming from the interior. And, and obviously, from an, when, even when we look at the whole notion of evolutionary biology, and if you, look, if you look at the evolution of life, you know, there, you, we begin to see there, there is an intel, there's obviously an intelligence at work here. This, 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 this is not purely accidental. Mm -hmm. where, and it's being, where is it being driven from? The interior, right? Mm -hmm. So the answer to your question is it's, 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 the, it's, it's ultimately, you know, the ultimate answer, I, as I understand it, is it's a love for itself. It's kind of a, it's kind of a cosmic narcissism in a sense. <laughs> but, you could, but you could say it's God's love of him or herself yeah. to create and manifest him or herself in and through form. It's, so it's kind of a self-love. And so when people experience kind of this, this spiritual love or kind of this kind of in, this state of intoxication, that's what they're experiencing. It's a love that's not personal. And, and, that's the, and the nature of consciousness, when you really begin to experience it directly, is that love. That's what it is. So it's, 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 it's a love for itself that's driving to create and manifest itself in form. Why? Because there's nothing else to do.